Welcome back to the channel, guys. Hello, selectors. And uh, we're talking about the new centers that you can be playing in uh, Prismatic Diva. Um, so here is Remember. So Remember is kind of a boring deck if you guys have been paying attention at all to the, the meta. It's probably going to be a very, very strong deck, so I behoove me to just glance over it and not really talk about it. Um, but really, if you've been paying attention to what Esper decks look like, this is just another version of Esper uh, decks in, in general. Uh, it's slightly different than the Tama uh, Esper deck, which is um, the control deck of, of choice, um, where it is a little bit more ener efficient. Tama required a lot of white ener to function, so you're really running 20 white ener to make this run. You can go way less on, on Remember. Uh, the other thing that it does is it basically takes everything that worked well in Tama uh, Esper and everything that worked well in Madoka Esper and just kind of fuses them together in a better package. Um, but I guess I should just talk about what Remember is in general in order to explain what that is. So, Remember, Dinner, Miko, Feasting Together. Um, this is a white Elrig that has the following abilities. Uh, when this Elrig attacks, target one signet on your opponent's field, down it, and freeze it. Um, this is really cool. It gets around, like it forces uh, Axia to not really work and, and dunk on freeze like a lot of these other freeze decks are, are wanting. Uh, and it also downs the thing, which is actually really, really good. Um, I think, like, even without this text, that the card would have been pretty good. With this text, this card is kind of broken. Um, so, you're not a freeze deck, and, and you probably shouldn't be playing a freeze deck with Remember. You could, I suppose. Um, but what this does is it just sort of, like, pushes that resource management that uh, control has really well going for it um, and just sort of pushes it a little bit more over to the top. So a lot of the times with control decks there are certain L rigs on the opponent's field that you can't deal with. Um, maybe H2O is a really good example of that type of thing. So if you just freeze it and just continuously make it frozen and make it a terrible signy for your opponent to keep on the field, uh, eventually they'll get rid of it themselves. So basically remember is delays problems until the opponent deals with them instead of you. Um, and it's quite strong in that, that respect. Um, so that's just sort of a bonus with the deck. The main draw of the deck is the action once per turn, which lets you look at the top three cards. You can add one card from among them to your hand and then put the bottom, put the rest on the bottom in any order. This inevitably allows you to stack your deck in the late game, which is kind of cool. Um, but looking at the top three means that you're always making uh, three cards uh, every turn, which means that you'll be able to fill out your fields every turn, which is really strong. You'll be able to have, there's a lot of cards right now in We Cross that like you discard stuff from your hand to do. So this kind of adds to that just critical mass of making sure you constantly have fuel for that type of thing. Um, plus always looking at the top three cards of your deck to filter and find what you need means that you're always hitting your guards. Uh, and more importantly, you are really filtering through your deck to find the answers to a lot of the threats the metagame is currently presenting. Um, one of the things that Tama didn't have that Madoka had in spades was just deck filtering, right? And and the reason why Madoka ended up probably being the better Elrig in uh, the the uh, sort of control decks format of, of last set was because of the filtering ability. This not only lets you filter for long term, but also lets you filter for short term too. You get it right away, right? So you, you are able to find the stuff that you want. Something that I really, really, really was impressed with Madoka was instead of having to run four Exias in order to always make sure you had Exias, you could run two Exias and always have Exias. Um, and this sort of does the same boat. It's like, you could probably run a singleton of the card in your, your deck, and there's a very good chance that you'll hit it over time uh, when you want to hit it, which means that you can fit more choice cards into your deck, more narrow cards into your deck, and inevitably hit what you're trying to hit. So remember also taking away the, the, the forcing to needing a bunch of draw cards in the main deck, I'm talking like miracle draws and stuff, although you probably should still be running some amount of draw in your main deck. Um, helps to just alleviate that and focus more on the stuff that matters for you. Um, so it's really good in that respect. Also, Tama needed 20 pips uh, in order to run because one of its abilities required 
uh, that you wanted to do every turn required white. Uh, remember doesn't require that, but in a weird way, remember also helps enter for you too, because you're constantly sourcing through your hand. You actually need less white, less blue, and less black in different things to make sure you always hit your enter that you need to do, because you'll be able to enter that stuff later, or you can put it on the field, and then it becomes enter after your opponents vanish it. Um, so it really does weirdly help filter your enter as well, just a little bit delayed, but it works out quite well. Um, so I've gone on and on about, about how good Remember is here. Let's talk about the other Elrig deck. Um, what I've got is I've actually moved away from Madoka Clap in this deck because I like Shield a lot. Um, more and more and more I played with Shield uh, from like Pigeon's uh, type of deck. The more and more I decided the ability to just prevent damage is huge. This, this metagame is really dependent on basically doing one damage on the field, one damage to the opponent's face. Um, with an L-Rig attack, and shield being able to block two damage, and specifically an L-Rig damage, is really big game. Um, so if I had to choice between shield and clap, I will take shield. Mel really is secretly the best, uh, assist right now that you could be playing, um, but the problem is I'd have to be playing green, and I don't want to be playing green. We don't have the uh, Japanese rule where we can play any colors in our deck now, so you can run anything. So it ends up being this that you want to stay in, in these Esper colors still. Um, Day Shield, the only problem is, like, if you were getting aggroed down to hell, Shield is actually kind of worse, because you might mill yourself out uh, with Shield's ability. If you're playing against the Esper decks, which you generally speaking are going to always play, then that's not really an issue. You just wait on Shield until basically the end of the game, and then you run Shield. Um, but it lets you run Madoka Dub, and Madoka Dub is probably one of the best, uh, like, utility assists that you can be running, especially in a control deck, uh, where you can make your opponent discard a card at random, you draw a card for free, and you can down a Signy on your opponent's field for free. Um, it's just fantastic uh, when you have other things to pair with it. Um, I like it a lot. Like I said, it's just a really good assist on the side. This deck is much more blue than the other... Um, the other, uh, what do you call it, uh, the other Esper decks that I've been running, the Esper control, and to be clear here, Esper, for anyone who's been wondering, is uh, white, blue, black colors. Uh, I've been running more of a white shield up kind of walling type of decks, um, but with Remember being able to filter so well, I feel more free to go a little heavier into discard, and I kind of like it there. Uh, and then you've got your Ultra Superheroes and Super Hellasty Saber. Look, none of these have changed. They're just both really, really good filtering, really, really good. The mill is really important against a lot of decks, and uh, you're always finding guards with these types of things. You're toolboxing with your Super Hellasty Saber by getting white Signy and uh, black Signy more later on, on that. Uh, when we get into the main deck, uh, it's just these are these are the the probably the most powerful engine that you could be running in We Cross right now. Anyways, uh, let's get to the main deck. Um, so this main deck looks a lot like your normal Esper control decks with a few notable inclusions now. Um, the first one to note is that, uh, let's just, we'll talk about the normal stuff too. You're doing your normal core of kind of disruption and walling, right? So Monomin gives you that disruption, discards the opponent. Bruno gives you discard. Uh, Falulu gives you discard. ZR gives you discard. Random Drain gives you discard. Um, like I said, this is just opponent normal stripping the opponent of uh, resources that you would do. The only change to this type of uh, resource stripping that's new is Follow Lou. So Follow Lou is basically just another version of Monomin. What I really, really kept noticing when I was running uh, these Esper control decks is I wanted to wall up against some aggro decks, and I, I struggled strapping both those lines. Walling against aggro decks, but also having enough disruption against the um, against the control decks or mid-range decks. Um, inevitably, what I ended up doing was is abandoning a lot of the um, that's, that type of uh, resource disruption uh, for walling, but Follow Lu actually gives you kind of an advantage over Bruno here, where it allows you to wall a little bit better. This is a level 2 with 8,000 power that does not need to attack, meaning that you can uh, resource deny your opponent, um, because it does everything on the attack step. Uh, 
So it's not necessarily better than Bruno. I think it's just better for this deck than, than Bruno is. Um, and then, of course, ZR, for what's worth, doing the job of always opening lanes on the opponent's field. Uh, you're not always going to get that 8,000 negative, but you get enough that you have the ability to potentially do it, uh, that you should be fine with it. Um, moving right along into some more resource dis uh, disruption, you've got Gabog being another form of resource disruption. Again, this is like secretly a multicolor card, in my opinion. This is like a I, anytime I'm playing blue white and I'm playing discard, I, I use this card. It's just a great way to disrupt what your opponents are doing. If they if they basically are drawing extra cards and trying to hide their resources by putting it on the field, let's say, uh, then this trashes things at the end of turn, and that's actually very very strong. Uh, plus, gains you cards as well. Like I said, you've got a, quite a bit of card draw in this type of deck, so you want to keep your resource management going. Uh, Orochu Maru is like the last type of resource dis. Man disruption that kind of exists you bounce cards back into the opponent's hand um getting a, a card to draw engine means that a rich is actually a little bit more um does the job a little bit better than it used to um so this card's quite strong there's a lot of hidden card draw hidden in this deck that isn't quite as obvious as just Haniel, for example which lets you just straight up draw a card one of the more interesting things too is uh when i was playing um the madoka deck that i was realizing is Haniel is actually a lot stronger than it used to be uh it's 2000 power seems like a, a weakness until you realize it can tack under a lot of these 3000 power stuff and while tama didn't want you attacking very much because it wanted to use the signies as a to be able to down in order to do its double attack um, when you don't have Tama as your L-Rig, Haniel becomes a lot stronger, um, allowing you to do this double attack. Uh, I'm sorry, allowing you to to attack with it under and then uh, be able to still, you know, draw cards with it and whatnot. Um, speaking of which, uh, we should probably get into the next thing, which is lane openers. Um, so this deck needs more lane openers than, than the Tama deck does because it has no ways to open lanes on its own. Um, so because it doesn't have a clock in the L rig, like control decks need clocks in we cross. That's that's that is one of the most important things to know in when you make a control deck is yes, the most important thing that you're doing is denying the opponent resources and specifically um stopping damage from yourself, but you also need a clock because this game is a proactive game. Um so Tama did it by doing double attacks. Madoka did it because it even had a little bit of a way to put something on the bottom of the opponent's deck. Um, Remember doesn't have that, but Remember does have unparalleled filtering, right? Which does allow you to, as long as you have a fair amount of, um, of clocks in your deck, you can find them and you're always offering one damage on the field plus one damage with your L rig. So what is your clocks? Well, we talked about Orochimaru being a clock here already. We talked about ZR being a clock here, probably one of the better ones too. Um, Phalaris is still a very good clock. Between using Ultra Superheroes Mill and the Phalaris Mill, you're always going to get at least one refresh on your opponents. There's plenty of ways to bring it back, so you'll always threaten that refresh as you need it. Um, but Mayu is the the new one um, that, you know, even though this is a one of in the deck, you're going to see it all across the table a lot more than you'd think. Um, just because there's ways to bring it back in this deck, but also the filtering means that they're always going to find it when they need it. Um, so this has the ability to vanish basically a level one at all points in time. It doesn't really matter what the, the uh, power is on that level one. Um, you're, yeah, you, it can do a level 2 and a level 3, but you're going to very rarely find it doing that. Uh, its other thing is it's got really nice utility. Being able to bring back a level 1 from your trash to your hand is pretty cool. One of the weird things in Esper is sometimes you would be like, uh, I have this really cool tool that allows me to bring a black signy back to my hand and a white signy back to your hand. And then you look at it and you go like, but I want to bring Monomin back to my hand. Monomin lets me discard the opponent and he's got one card in his hand and it will it, it's the guard. I know it is. Um, so being able to bring back uh, something like that or a uh, Yuki to your, to your hand as well, right? Like Yuki allows you to vanilla out the, uh, a Signy or switch a lane if they have a remember and you got to mess with that kind of thing. Um, being able to, to do that type of effect is actually very, very strong with Mayu or Mew. I mean, tell me how it's pronounced in the, the, the comments down below. Um, 
So I, I, I like that as another version of lane opening. Um, the last version of damage here that actually is worth mentioning is remember, the deck does a really, really good job at uh, stranding opponent's resources, including enter starving them. So increasing the, um, the center, basically increasing the ability to guard by, by having to tax it could actually sneak you in some damage in the late game if you properly prep for it. It's a little worse than when Tama. Tama did double attacks here, and that double attacks kind of mattered. Um, but there's engineer. There's plenty of games that I've won by engineering that tax uh, to help you out. Um, the wall Signy that's worth mentioning is, again, you've got Furlulu. Um, you've got Tuyuki as a, a wall. This is just naturally a very cool Signy because it can attack for 3,000 AK under most Signy, and then it gains uh, it gains 8,000 on the opponent's turn, so it becomes a wall on their opponent's turn. Um, one Buckler, which is a wall, like it's a 10,000 level 2, so that's fine. So between this, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 cards that can block aggro. Um, I, I normally would rather have 10 cards that can block aggro, but Bernices kind of handles that as well. Uh, you still need some amount of black, right? And the correct number for black is at least one, two, three, four, five. I would feel happier at six, but I really couldn't figure out another way to fit one more black pip into my deck. Um, so I'm just valuing black a little bit more when I'm eventually in the late game going to need that Deus Shield. Um, so I can wait around on it a little bit longer, which is how how I'm getting away with five black pips to activate it. Um, but the uh, Bernisus is actually another wall. Again, in the early game, it's 3,000, which is I'd rather... like I was running Typo for a little while instead of this because I'd rather have just some wall Signy here. Um, but it plays nice in the Esper uh, matchup control, sort of the Esper uh, mirror, because you want to put it in front of Signy that eventually will vanish it, right? So it, it kind of plays strange that you play it early game to be vanished and then late game not to be vanished. You'd rather find the two Yokis early on against aggro and not worry about Bernices until late game where there are 7,000 against them. Um, give or take, you know. So, so you can figure out how that works for you. But I think there's enough anti-aggro in this deck that it should be working. Oh yeah, and I forgot. There's also this new card that is also a level 2. So actually, we're, we're at that 10 that I feel more comfortable with. I'd rather have a few more level 4s that stop damage. Um, but the Bernices is a nice, ha a nice halfway house. This last utility that's kind of interesting here is the... Um, how did Tiffany pronounce it? Uh, Kokuri-san, uh, Phantom Spirit. This is a, a level 2 8,000 against aggro, uh, and then against the uh, control decks, if it's a, um, if you hit it with a life burst, you draw one card, all the hand cards in your hand uh, turn into guards. I think they're all Signy in your hand turned to guards, um, so that might be a mistypo here on Dexus. But anyways, uh, it's pretty good. You get more guards <laughs> out of it uh, when you hit the life burst. I, there's not a deck that that's not that great against. Um but the upside here is this action ability, which basically says that white uh, target white signy when you put this into the trash uh, becomes unvanishable. This really does help against um, certain decks, right? More importantly, it helps against like um, some decks against aggro where you you kind of just need to shore up the field. But more importantly, it gives helps you get some pretty strong plays against uh, mid range or control decks, right? So if you play this against if you play this with uh, Gaybog, you're basically ensuring that you're going to get a lot of value out of your Gaybog. If you play against Orochimaru, it means that you're going to basically get a lot of lane opening, right? You might pair this with a Mayu, for example, and Orochimaru, and then do this type of thing. So that way you can um, get two lane opening, basically, two for two turns. It lets you really get a, a explosive damage out against uh, a control deck that you wouldn't normally have. Um, and then against... Uh, you know, remember, you pl do that kind of thing. There's a lot of decks that rely on actions. So by doing this with a remember, you're basically being like, no, nah, there's no good way to get rid of this remember. You're going to have to pay up the butt for two turns uh, on your action stuff. Uh, and then, of course, Exia. Like, look, uh, in, a, in a world where um, you were playing against either aggro, which Exia raffle stomps, oh, or you're playing against control, which, honestly, Exia is really good against, too, because it's like... If you can stop it from being able to damage something, like open a lane on the field, um, 
then Exia is, is quite strong against those Esper control decks as well. So you can make you can make some sticky white Signy is a problem for your opponent. So it's a really cool add to this type of deck. Uh, overall, this deck is absurdly powerful. Um, I think it's a good starting place if you want to tweak out some of these numbers. Maybe you go down one Gaybog and up one Mayu or something. You know, there's like options here that you can go around and, and change these numbers for. I think I have the bare minimum number of white. Let me do a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, I feel comfortable with 18. You could probably cut it down by two two white counts, and it's totally fine and doable. Uh, the black counts are a little shaky. The blue counts are perfectly reasonable in this type of deck right now. Um, you can tweak these numbers to whole hell, and and you'll be you'll find you you can find whatever sort of uh, silver bullet you're trying to do with remember. So yeah, I think you're going to be seeing remember for quite a bit in this meta.